Oh, we're back at it again, Internet. You know who it is. It's your boys and girl. <laughs> That's right. It's episode number 40, the big 4-0, pour out a 40 for your friends here at Brothering Around. Uh, my name is Wes Gardner. I'm Mr. Kami Da Hobo. And over there, we got a YouTuber whose content I crave. <laughs> It's so inappropriate. It's like just a nasty. What the fuck does that mean, Mister Mister Marco Flores, nerd in the bay? <laughs> uh, so I have a conclusion to my uh, wearing both he- headphones in both ears. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so I went to the, I went to the courthouse to pay my damn ticket because <laughs> I don't want to see this thing anymore. Right. And I yeah I took the day off. I you know I took the day off. Not to not get paid, so I can pay my uh, ticket. And the fine for wearing both headphones in both ears is one hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Fuck! Damn. Yep. California. Yep. Huh. Hmm. So it's like a very specific amount too. Yeah. It's not even like <laughs> it is. It's like one hundred fifty, two hundred. No, one hundred ninety-seven dollars. What? One ninety-seven. <laughs> well, you, you might as well just. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna give them that that idea to round up, but. Yeah, that uh, mm. that happened. Um, yeah, <laughs> two hundred dollars is a little too much. Well, what about one ninety five? That's not enough. <laughs> Let's yeah. split the difference. <laughs> my friend, my friend, I give it to you for one ninety seven. <laughs> yeah, I have deal just for you. <laughs> when they say my friend, my friend, they're 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 not not your friend. <laughs> they're not your yeah. on your side. They're not on your side. I, that's what you do to those small kiosk employees. That like, I'll make you a deal. Just look at them and be like, I bet you say that to all the girls, and then just like run away. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? You <laughs> <laughs> say to all the girls. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, we got Mister Todd EVF, the the precipice master himself. How are you, sir? Eh, just doing vampire <laughs> things. Yeah, just all right. Uh, yeah. That's what it says on the wiki. Oh, that is, it is that time of year. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. It is. It came quick, didn't we're it? We're not like we're not we're not theming our content either. That's <laughs> right. Like dropping the ball on that. Right. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> yeah. So good. Like what? Two more episodes this month. Yep. I think so. Something yeah. like that. Yep. Hmm. We can, we'll, we'll basically just put like a little jack o' lantern on one of the thumbnails and call it Halloween. <laughs> there you go. That's our whole spirit. There you go. The spirit of Halloween <laughs> superstore. Um, and then just we put, have more. Put, oh, good. I, I was going to say, I just put the sea creature from South Paul Regional Wrestling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Tyler, he keeps adjusting his mustache. Like, he just keeps, like, <laughs> pushing it up because it keeps falling off. And we have the lovely Moriarty. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Hanging in there. We're we're doing good. I can't believe it's episode 40 already. Mm-hmm. We are getting old. Yeah. <laughs> we had that inside joke that every episode of Brother Around talked about how old we were getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because for like the first 13 or 14 episodes, every single time is like, remember when? And then we'd go back on all these old tangents. And I think I, think I remember that on my first appearance, yeah. actually. There you go. Pepperidge <laughs> Farm remembers. Pepperidge Farm. Uh, <laughs> uh, every I time I finish. Until we're bald, yeah. which is another thing. Yeah. Every time I finish recording an episode, I put on some Bengay. And then call it the <laughs> you have to ice up. Be like, oh man. Yeah. Well, you don't use Epsom salts. That's right. Shack, you know that Shack icy hot. The patches, yeah. You drive yeah. off with the with... newfangled patches. Yeah. I never understood those. Yeah, you, you, you drive off with the general. With a... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, of course, of course. Oh, uh, I just picture that now. Like you have a heating pad on. <laughs> just a heating pad on my on my ears or something but you but you gotta like back. go old school you have to use like that hot water bottle that like <laughs> the rubber thing yeah, for like yeah, back yeah. in the day oh. the water pack <laughs> you're essentially like a step away from an iron lung you're just 
<laughs> oh, no, every every time I finish recording, all the 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 young lions from New Japan they come around and put that ice pack on my on the body part. <laughs> yeah, that sore. they they put the jacket over you like you're James Brown. They're yeah. just like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh god, do him on, sir, and you're like, oh, <laughs> Marco San, Marco San, please, you senpai, it's okay. <laughs> walk back to the losers, the losers aisle, not not the winners. Yeah, go to the left. <laughs> this right side's not for you. I lost, just to go I to lost the left again. Side. <laughs> and then pay this fine of one hundred ninety-seven dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, eventually you're I just going to go on Monero Robinson. Suzuki on them. So. Oh, that's I, true. Yeah. You just start beating them up in the aisle and shit. That's like, right. fuck you. Hell yeah. So that's. About I don't me. need help. Yeah, that's when <laughs> you know. Pay my for me. You've gotten past the point of like being too old, and now you're so old, you become Terry Funk. You just like start. <laughs> <laughs> You, just start, you should like, see my moonsault. Yeah, like fucking throwing <laughs> chairs and like even if it's in the crowd, it doesn't matter. You become like angry yeah. Stan Henson <laughs> and just barreling people over. Oh. All right, Jeez. Oh. But speaking of getting old, what this, this this is going to be kind of a more <laughs> themed show a little bit. We actually have a few topics to talk about, and I'll start with the main one. I know we talked a little bit about uh, Blade Runner last episode. Um, I think a lot of our Blade Runner talk was like off the air, though, right? It was. Mm, I think so. It was. Where, where we kind of maybe. Dove, I know we touched on it, <laughs> and uh, yeah, who knows? Who we don't listen to this. It this all bleeds show. together. Absolutely. And so I'm gonna start mentioning shit that we've done, and it's just like that was great on the show, wasn't it? Yeah. Like I have no idea what he's talking it's about. That Chris Farley that, bit. Yeah. Remember yeah, that? That was that awesome. That needs to be like Patreon content or something. Yeah. That's true, like cutting room floor type stuff. Yeah, because some yeah. of it's but very. As long as you don't, as long as you don't disconnect, Kami, then we should. Be <laughs> yeah, I'll just record it overnight. They just like pilfer through yeah. it and be like, "Oh, here it is." Glue it on. There um, you go. Much, yeah. much like the um, the fabled uh, buddy cop movie. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I wish we That's still right. had that <laughs> clip. <laughs> God, we went on for like forty five minutes about that <laughs> insane <laughs> idea. You guys missed out. We did. Sorry. Hey, we're talking about movies and sequels, <laughs> so we might have to make a sequel, uh, a direct to DVD <laughs> sequel that never, like the original, never came out. So they're like, okay, who are these yeah. characters? Why should I care? But none of it's set up right. Like, <laughs> we go. just take it. Oh, you know who these people are, and you're like, I don't know who yeah. any of these characters are, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got to see Blade Runner 2049, and uh, that movie's freaking incredible. And yeah, yeah, because Blade Runner is my favorite film of all time. I own it mm-hmm. on like five different formats. I have like a Sid Mead art book that has all the giraffes of like concept art, and you know, I have the old Westwood video game. I'm like a Blade Runner freak. And whenever they mm-hmm. announced the new one, I was like, oh god, this is gonna suck. But then they started saying, hey. You know, it's the same director that did Sicario and Arrival. And I was like, all right, both of those movies are fantastic. So, and then it's like, oh, and it's, you know, shot by the same guy that did uh, Sicario, which, genius. Um, oh, and it's music by Hans Zimmer, and he's remastering all the Vangelis mm-hmm. music from the first one. And I was like, holy shit, that mm-hmm. sounds great. <laughs> and then, like, the more they were talking so about doing it, it. Yeah, they're they're really doing it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, you know, I go in, I try not to have my hopes up, but, you know, I'm a big Blade Runner freak, and I'm like, okay, I'm excited, but let me be excited, that's fine. If it's disappointing, I kind of knew it would be anyway. And then I left, and it made the original movie better, so I love the original even more, and this is mm. equal in my mind to the original. Um, okay, I was going to ask. Yeah, if, and it's not even like a honeymoon than... phase type thing. Um, where it's like, oh, it was just so cool and intoxicating and all this other stuff, and I think I like it just the same. Like, this is one of those that the day it comes out, I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to watch it kind of religiously on loop and just let it really sink yeah. in. Because they, they understood what made that movie so good in the first place. Like, that was my biggest worry, is that they're going to make this a big action movie and big car chases and woo, cool, like, stuff's exploding. I think there was one explosion the entire movie and it lasted like half a second, and then they like switched mm-hmm. scenes. Like there was no crazy Brockheimer aftermath. Like, no, no, this isn't that type of movie. Like it's about three hours long. 
and it's a, a very slow burn and that's the way it should be. And there's, I, I, I would say it does a perfect thing that sequels do. And here in a little bit, we're going to talk about some other movies and trailers. And this is how I kind of want to tie it in. The best movie sequels take what was good about the original and make it better. And then take what was bad about the original and chop it right. Like, you cut the fat, you get the stuff that didn't work out, you bring in new stuff that works, and then you improve what was already great. And that's exactly what Blade Runner 2049 does. It it cuts the fat of like, I love Blade Runner to death, but that is a boring ass movie because shit does not happen in that movie. Like, <laughs> you're waiting for this big plot beat to happen and it never comes. And you're like, I, I've been here two hours and 45 minutes. Like... You know, but <laughs> but that's part of the appeal of Blade Runner. It's like you you live in this world with these characters and mm. things happen around you and not everything has an answer. And, you know, it has all this like metaphysical type shit as part of the story. And they bring that into the new one, but they actually give characters arcs and those arcs are finalized. And, yeah, there's still questions at the end, but you're like, I feel like we just saw a movie. You know, yeah, I feel like there was a beginning, a middle, and an end that characters went 180 or learned from their mistakes or, you know, like there was growth and it was cool because it, the movie it really reminded me of besides Blade Runner was the movie Children of Men, which mm -hmm. is freaking genius. If you haven't seen it, literally just go to the store and buy it. Just buy it off Amazon, whatever you got to do. That movie's fucking amazing. And uh, that's the type of vibe that this Blade Runner movie has, where it's like a dystopian world, um, just like the original. But the, the, the hint mm -hmm. at the end of this one is there's that tiny little sparkle of hope, that little tiny boop, like they put a pinpoint on it at the very end. That way, whenever you leave the theater, it was a depressing-ass three-hour movie that made you feel great coming out of it. You know, and mm. I think there's like a magic to that. And apparently it bombed at the box office. It absolutely just plummeted. And that's kind of what happened to the original. Mm -hmm. um, because it just, it was a flop. Whenever it came out, people were like, what is this? And I think that's what's going to happen with this one. But what I also think is going to happen with this one is 30 years from now, there's going to be kids on a podcast talking about, have you guys seen the, heard this movie called Blade Runner? Like, right. it, it's going to have that mm -hmm. kind of tail. Like, th there's going to be a cult following. There's going to be people like me who are obsessed with it. But then, you know, 25 years from now, there's going to be that new generation that, like, picks it up at whatever. Or, like, they're going to have a HoloLens scanner of Netflix or something. And they're going to, like, beep, boop, boop on their forehead. And then be like, I want to watch Blade Runner. And then, like, they <laughs> hit their temporal lobe control mechanisms or, like, whatever <laughs> fucking shit's going to happen <laughs> in 30 years. And yes, nine. Yeah, right. It's going to be minority report. They just like move their hands around and shit starts happening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but people are going to see it and they're going to be like, wow, this thing was way ahead, of, way ahead of its time. And it's, I think it's an important movie and I think it's one people should see, but I totally get it. If the last thing you want to do is see Blade Runner 2049, like I understand mm. because it's not a movie for everyone. And that's why I like it so much is because they didn't try to make a movie for everyone. Uh, they knew what Blade Runner was, and then they did it. They made a Blade Runner movie. Like, this is the only movie besides the original Blade Runner movie that I feel is a Blade Runner movie. Like, all these other movies copied it, and the style, and, like, the look, and the feel, but they never quite got it. But this movie gets it. And super stoked. Because now I'm like... And the selfish side of me, and I told this to my wife, you know, my wife loved it, too. She liked the original okay, but she was like, eh, this doesn't quite work for me. But then we came out of the new one, and she was like, that was great. She was like, that three hours flew by. Um, and what, what I told her is I'm kind of selfish, because normally whenever a movie fails at the box office, it comes out on DVD pretty quick. And I was like, yeah, I could buy this on Blu-ray in like a month. Because <laughs> this, <laughs> this movie bomb. So I just want to buy that <laughs> shit, man. Give me all the deluxe digital editions. Give me all that stuff. Like, yes, yeah. I'll be selfish. Like, give me all that. Um, but yeah, but it, it brings up a neat uh, thing about sequels is you look at the most famous sequels ever, you know, you look at Empire Strike Back, you look at Godfather 2, 
And these things are, it, it, it's almost like they kind of go a different direction. Not necessarily. Like, they still have the same vibe. But, you know, Empire Strikes Back is not a new hope. Like, no. in any mm-hmm. regard. And in right. and, and a little bit, we're going to be talking about The Last Jedi. And, you know, Godfather 2 got way more personal than the first Godfather did. Um, it, it went more into, like, family dynamics and stuff like that. So they kind of changed it. Instead of this, look at this slightly romantic, in the Greek tragedy kind of way that the mob and, you know, the mafia and the Italian mob is. In the second one, it was mm-hmm. more like family can fuck each other over real quick. Like, that was kind of the moral of the story. So it changed dynamics, and it changed direction, and it was way better for it uh, because it left the original alone, and then it made its own statement and its own thing. And, like, the same thing, Empire Strikes Back. It's considered the best sequel ever made because it's like, that ended on a fucking downer. Like, Empire mm-hmm. did not have a happy ending, to say the least. You know, I mean, Hans and Carbonite, Luke lost his hand. Uh, the whole, you know, Vader won. Like, bad guys won. When does that ever happen? Yeah. Now it happens a lot more because <laughs> people realize it worked in Empire Strikes Back. Um, it was a ballsy movie. Like, that was a, that's why it's probably my favorite, is because they didn't pull punches. They're like, yeah, this is a story that we're telling, and there will be a third one. But to get to the third one and that payoff, you got to go through some shit first. Like, <laughs> things yeah. can't be happy all the time. Um, yeah, and, sure. You know, and it's kind of nice because with Blade Runner 2049, I don't think there's any need for a sequel. Um, I think in 30 years, if they want to make another Blade Runner movie, have at it. But, like, this tells everything you need to do. And the big thing is, it stays far away from the whole is Decker to Replicant stuff. Like, they they hmm. mention it for like one scene, and I think it's one line from Jared Leto's character, just to like replant that seed in your mind about, oh yeah, that was a thing. If Deckard was a replicant or not, but then hmm. the movie itself, in my mind, it kind of sol- solidifies the answer um, if he is or not. But it's still they never come out and answer it, but. Just by yeah. judging on Harrison Ford's performance and stuff, like it's pretty obvious. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to get into spoilers so, and stuff. So yeah, so okay, so you're saying that um, this this movie is pretty much contained. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing: I would highly recommend seeing the first Blade Runner first, just mm-hmm. to get your mind in that space. Of like, okay, this is the movie that I'm about to go see. Like, it's going to give you the vibe. Mm-hmm. It's going to give you the feel. It's going to give you the hook. What are replicants? Why is Rick Deckard important? It gives you that kind of backstory. Um, mm-hmm. But this one is almost 98% about Ryan Gosling's character. Um, right. Which is a smart move. I think it's completely smart. Use Harrison Ford, you know, as Rick Deckard as kind of that padding around it. Almost the... The, if this is happening in a snow globe, Harrison Ford would be the globe itself. Like, it's mm-hmm. contained within that reality. He's just put there for context. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is absolutely Ryan Gosling's story. Like, a thousand percent. Um, okay. So that's why, that's why I recommend it to anyone, really. is because <laughs> it tells a beginning, middle, and end um, for mm-hmm. the characters they introduce. And I think that's smart. Cool. Yeah. Did uh, t- either Todd or Moriarty, did you guys watch it? I have not had a chance yet. Um, not yet. But after hearing that it bombed so much in the box office, I'm like, oh, it's going to be on, on Blu-ray yep. or VOD soon. Yep. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> because an experience like Blade Runner, and I mean, if per chance I had seen it, if I, if I was around back then and whatnot and saw it when, when it first came out in theaters, First one's a real slog to get through. Yes, it is. And I would have not had the appreciation I do now for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I see it as like, yeah, you want to have your, your big release of it, but you know, people are going to wait to 
watch it at home where they can be more comfortable. Mm-hmm. They can kind of control the flow of it a little better, sure. that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and that's how Blade Runner kind of works best because then you get to appreciate it even more. Mm-hmm. Um, because, yeah, seeing it on mm-hmm. a huge screen, like, holy shit. And they, they had the sound cranked up enough that any time, like, a ship would fly overhead, it would rattle the building. Like, the walls huh. in the theater, it was so mm-hmm. rad. I was like, yeah, this is badass. Like, <laughs> you know, I was like, this is exactly what I wanted. And the, what made it the best was that there were, it was me and my wife and four other people in this massive theater. <laughs> massive. That was it? Yes. There were six people in that room. Um. So, yeah, it, whenever I say it bombed, it bombed bad. Like, I think it only did mm-hmm. $30 million and the budget was like $300 million. Ooh. So yeah, it it did not do well at all. Um, oh. But and it sounds so weird to say, but I'm kind of, you know, I want people to get paid, and I want you know the directors and producers sure. and stuff because this is if this is a movie that you know it earned it like this, they deserve all the credit and all the money in the world because they did it. I don't know how, but they did it. Uh, they got one of the most important films ever created, made a sequel to it. And the sequel works as good, if not better, than the original. And you're like, how does that fucking mm-hmm. happen? Like that, that the yeah. odds of that ever happening is astronomically low. But they, what I they th- did it. Amazing about this is I'm looking this up, and it did 36 million domestically. It won the weekend, and it's still considered a flop. Yeah, and it's like, Holy shit. The mo- Martin Scorsese did a really cool, uh, ho- I think it was for the Hollywood Reporter or Hollywood Insider or one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a guest article, I think yesterday or the day before, that talked about what the problem was with like Rotten Tomatoes and things like that. And it wasn't, uh, and, you know, you would think that Martin Scorsese would go off on the well, you know, any aggregate scores is going to cut funding and all that stuff. But he didn't even talk about that. Like, oh, if a movie doesn't get 90 percent, it's considered a failure or something. He didn't even really talk about that. He said that it just changed stuff like Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic mm-hmm. changed the yeah. way inherently of the relationship of an audience to a movie. And that's what his argument is, is he said, now every movie producer is now a used car salesman. And you're reviewing a movie the same way you're reviewing like a meal through Yelp. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I guess it was okay. But like, that doesn't mean anything. Like, did you get emotional context out of it? Did you get, you know, movies are a little bit different. They're more a kind of a, a good movie can change your life. Right. You, mm-hmm. you, and, and really, it, it was one of those things that after we got done watching it, even driving home, you know, we have to go through downtown and all this stuff. And, you know, I was in the passenger seat and I was looking out the window and I was like looking up at the skyscrapers and stuff. And I was like, I see it. Like uh, now, I, as of right now, I'm in Blade Runner. Like you see it in like the, mm-hmm. the signs and the way that, you know, it was slightly rainy on the street. So like the, the, you know, the red lights from the stoplights are like shining off the side of buildings and stuff. And like, you're just there. You're in it. And I was like, yeah, this is it. This is real life. I, I get it. I get all of it. Like, it all makes sense. And good movies do that. You know, whenever you go see an awesome superhero movie, you want to go outside and, like, lift a car above your head. You know, <laughs> you have that sort of, like, hype about it. You're like, oh, shit. Like, oh, I could change the world. Like, you have that embracing of it. And his argument is Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes completely takes all that out of it. Because then people are so worried about, well, if I were to give this a number, well, what would the number be? Oh, God. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, yeah. would it be a splat or would it be a big tomato? Like, oh, it. so now it, oh, it becomes instead of like, did this affect me emotionally? It's, well, you know, um, I guess the acting was sort of OK, but I would have thought that like everyone becomes a film critic, which they're not supposed to be mm-hmm. like they're supposed to be film critics and then they're supposed to be film watchers. And nary the two shall meet. And I kind of agree with that. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can see what he means by that. Like, there should only be a certain batch that are really respected high on their tower of like, like Roger Ebert. I think Roger Ebert was the best film critic to ever live. And we've talked about it before, but the reason why is because Roger Ebert could hate a movie. He could absolutely despise it. And the way he wrote the review would make me read the review and be like, oh, I'm going to love this movie. 
You know, like mm. he, he was able to do that. He was able to get his point across, but he wouldn't be like, oh, this movie's so terrible. Don't go see it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Like he really cynical. He would actually be critical of the movie and be like, they, they did this great. They didn't do this great. Um, you know, we always do the joke of if you're a fan of the genre, like right. if you're a fan of RPGs, you're going to love this RPG. Well, no shit. Like, of course <laughs> I am. Um, but Roger Ebert was really able to hearken in about like, he would never use terms like uh, engrossing. He mm-hmm. he wouldn't use terms like oh what are some of the funny ones that we've made fun of Marco like uh, oh gosh um, there's like a there's like uh, seven or eight of them um, visceral uh, visceral yeah um, yeah these th- all these words um, mean nothing like uh, <laughs> engaging um, Engage. compelling oh my one. god compelling is the one that just makes me want to if I had hair I'd fucking rip it out. Uh, because because here's the thing compelling doesn't say anything like Mm -hmm. tell me what is compelling about it what compelled you to keep playing or what compelled you to keep watching that's your review not that it's compelling like Mm -hmm. it's like if all your movie reviews just said the word good you're like yeah that doesn't say anything like it was good Mm -hmm. okay thanks it was nice all right sure yeah those words are empty they don't have a lot of weight um but but yeah with like all the and kind of on that and to to steer it back to one of the other topics that we're going to talk about so we all saw the justice league trailer right we did Uh, i did did? i'm not even interested in it oh wow so (laughs) Uh, what, DC completely burned me. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and I can I can understand that, and because you know Marco and I have talked at length about it. Like I have not c- caught up. I think the last superhero film I saw was Deadpool, and then before that it was the first Avengers, and I've not seen mm-hmm. anything else since. I haven't seen any of this like Captain America. I haven't seen any of the like Thor. Uh, I saw the first Thor. I think. Um. But like, I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't seen what? Yeah, no, I I really haven't. And dude, yeah, I know. It it's just one of those things. It's for some reason, even if it's not true, the way that they're being pushed, and this goes true for the Justice League trailer. But I'll tell you the difference with the Justice League thing. All of these movies kind of look the same to me. And mm-hmm. it's funny because you read the review about Blade Runner and everyone's like, oh, my God, this movie's so long. This movie's just such a long movie. Oh, Blade Runner 2049, it'd be great if, you know, it was like 45 minutes shorter. If you look at the running time, it's only 10 minutes longer than any Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. Marvel movies are okay. fucking like, if I sat down, seriously, and I think I did the math on this. If I sat down to watch all of the Marvel movies that I missed, it would be like 87 hours. And it's like, fuck, like, I don't have 87. Are you kidding? I I don't want to take a week off of work just to be able to catch up, you know, with every single one of these releases. Because each one of those fucking movies is like four hours long. (laughs) So it's like, shit, man, I'm a fan of Lord of the Rings. And those movies are only 12 hours. Um, Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, but here's the thing with Justice League. It looked a little... Kind of samey. I like the fact that they played off the old Man of Steel theme because, oddly enough, I liked Man of Steel. I'm the crazy guy that liked that movie except for the ending because the whole Zod shit was dumb. But the rest of it, I thought, (laughs) was a great superhero movie. It was a great Superman movie. Um, There was like a five-minute span whenever Clark Kent is with his mom and they're in front of his dad's grave. That five-minute span from there to when he starts at the Daily Planet is perfect. You could have sold me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You could have sold me that five minutes on a DVD and I would pay full price. Because I was like, that is Superman. That five minutes is like what encapsulates that character so well. And they play off of that in the first like two minutes of this Justice League trailer is Clark Kent's, you know, in the field and, you know, Lois is walking out there and then it starts playing the theme. And I was like, okay, I get it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm into this right here. Um, then it started becoming a DC movie, 
right? <laughs> and I was like, uh, mm. until my boy, Jason Momoa, comes out as Aquaman. <laughs> and, the only dude that can make Aquaman look cool. And dude, he did. <laughs> and here's the deal. I was like, okay, how is he going to play this? Right? Because I've, I've heard he's going to be Aquaman, and what's he going to do? But I, I can't remember. Okay, so they're in the trailer. They're all fighting this big thing, because of course they are, right? Yeah. It worked for the Avengers, right. so why not the Justice League? So they're, <laughs> they're fighting this big thing, and then the thing knocks Aquaman back, and Aquaman's like flying away. And then uh, who is it that grabs Aquaman out of the air? Cyborg. Cyborg. Yeah, yeah. Cyborg grabs him. And he was like, we're not done yet or something, you know, just out of thin air, like gra- grabs the guy. And then Jason Momoa looks at him Momoa. and goes, my man. And I was like, my man. I was <laughs> like, I could way get behind Jason Momoa, buddy cop, like that version of Momoa, Aquaman. Where Momoa he, is like, he's just a badass. Yeah. He's just yeah. a badass gangster. He's like, what's up, bro? Like yeah. he will bro out that whole movie and I will, I'll be all in. If Jason Momoa is Aquaman, a, bro, yeah, if he's a bro as Aquaman, I'm all in. Like since I will go see that movie just for that, because I was like, yeah, that's the, that's the perfect take of an Aquaman character. Cause everyone's like Aquaman, what's he going to do? But then if he comes out yeah. like, Denzel Washington and traffic or uh, not traffic, but a uh, training day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my god, that would be the greatest of all time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, like that's what I want. That's what I want out of my life. Like he could, he can. You want, you want that? Type I, of that's what I want. He <laughs> can hold that whole movie by himself if that's the case. He will in his own movie. You watch, dude. I'll be stoked i'll watch all that shit man because <laughs> i mean i'm a fan yeah. of chris hemsworth as yeah. thor because he kind of does it a little mm-hmm. bit a little bit he brings yeah, a little yeah. bit of the bro to thor and i'm fine with that a, t- a tinge uh, yeah just a hint you could tell he wants to kind of take the cuffs off a little bit and hang out and that's fine yeah. but like jason momoa if he embraces and goes all in on being a dude bro as aquaman i'm fucking in it man forever <laughs> I'll buy I'll buy posters. I'll buy underoos. Like I don't care. I'll I'll make sure he gets he gets money for doing this. You know? He gets his money. Right. That's it, man. Uncle man, we need you. I'm I'm yeah. too busy lifting weights, bro. Yeah, yeah, I gotta absolutely. Duty. I gotta do. <laughs> Seriously, like I will. I'm all in because that's fantastic. He just blows. He just blows off the Justice League like they're fighting some shit. Yeah. You guys don't need me anyway. I'm out here He's lifting weights, playing Call of Duty. Like fuck this you shit. guys know, I gotta I'm, take I'm, my cr- I'm my crew. Team before I go, yeah, I'm lawn mowing my algae here. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like because that, that's yeah. a take that no one expected, right? Because everyone's like, "Oh, superhero, you have to be very stoic. You have to be very like." Mm. Mm, and there's a sunset, and you're like contemplating what it means to really be a superhero, like all the same shit that all the superheroes do. Like what? Do I deserve this power? Like yeah. all the existential crisis that, you know, that sort of like not hopelessness, but oh, it's a lot of responsibility, but somebody's got to do it. Like, fuck all that. Like, let him, yeah, like drive up in an ocean car and be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's basically the rock from Fast and I Furious. Really well. You know, it just, that's yeah. fine. He flexes out of a cast, like the whole thing. Like, just give me that. <laughs> Daddy's got to go to work. Yeah, Daddy's got to go. Yes, absolutely. yes. <laughs> oh, it'd be so great. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. But yeah, what? Uh, so, yeah, okay, so, I mean, yeah, you guys saw the Justice League trailer. Well, like, what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, I I saw it and I was like, okay. Um, the I think as you're discussing it uh, from your point of view, I'm sort of seeing as like each each of the cast members, each of the the members of the Justice League. With with Avengers, them getting together, I felt like they were like they were like section bosses in a game, like in a stage, right. section bosses. Mm-hmm. Each character, like Captain America, Iron Man, all that stuff. They're like section bosses in a game. With Justice League, they portray them as like like uh end of the stage bosses getting together. Like they're they're big on their own. But yet, this, whatever this threat is, they still can't deal with it mm-hmm. on their own. Mm-hmm. So they have to get together and become the mega final boss right. sort of thing. <laughs> right. You know? Um, it was, minus, minus Superman. So, 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and one of the important things, and I mean, I haven't seen Wonder Woman. I haven't seen Batman v Superman. I haven't seen, hell, I haven't seen really any of the movies except Man of Steel to where any of these characters do anything. So, Mm -hmm. but just based on the trailer for Justice League, I will say that it looks like they've done a good job of making sure every character is a separate character. Because part of my problem with superhero films, especially entourage superhero films, is you can kind of replace the lines of one character with any other character. You know what I mean? Like, who who cares who says, look out! Like, there's no personality with it. Like, the way they write it is kind of safe. That everyone's like, come on team, let's stick together. And then there's one other character like, no, I work better alone. But then it's like you could give yeah, I, I, you could give those lines to yeah they, you could give those lines to any set of characters and it would still work which is kind of a problem yeah like Scar Leo yeah, uh, Black Widow could say come on team let's work together and then Hulk says no I work better alone or Hulk says <laughs> come on team let's work together and then Black Widow says no I work better alone and you're like. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Either way, it's kind of the same thing. Like you get the same point across, and it doesn't, it doesn't yeah, hurt yeah. either character, but it doesn't help them either. So it's just kind of it, this. It wouldn't work for Hawkeye, I'll tell you that much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Guys, I only brought eleven arrows, so I mean, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> that's a, that SNL skit. <laughs> Why only eleven? I, I, I brought twelve. That's on <laughs> Oh, that arrow's unsanitary. Ugh, I'm not using that. But, but, you know, it's like Um, that type of writing. It's big on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I can can definitely see that because, like, yeah, with what we're discussing, Aquaman being new bro here, he he, he has his own section of the, you know, the movie and then Batman trying to, I guess, trying to be, like, the level-headed, you know, we got, there's a threat coming. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Wonder Woman doing her thing too, kind of, kind of melding in as well, like with the lines and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. shining at some points. Cyborg seems to be the more like just in the background because we don't know right much in terms of the movie version of Cyborg, um, what he will do and if he's going to be you know loved by everybody or not. And then you have the Flash, who is the kid, kid uh, Beast Boy version of like Teen Titans Go, being kind of like the annoying. One in the in the group. Oh yeah, like, the, like I'm always a hungry for a cheeseburger. Thing. Like that guy. Yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you you do have that, um, kind of like the extremes of the personalities, and then yeah, as you can say, like with the Avengers, pretty much everybody can fit that same yeah. mold. Like Captain America, you know, a stoic leader. Iron Man, a little bit more like sarcastic, but he can. Do that too. Hawkeye, same thing, same thing. Yep. Hulk is the one that probably stands out the most because, like, Hulk talks like a, a, a three year old kid. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those that, you know, I, I, I don't know if Justice League has what it takes besides Jason Momoa to, like, pull me into the theater to care. But it's one mm-hmm. of those, if it comes on, you know, FX and there's nothing else on. I'll be like, all right, yeah, we can watch this. We can watch the Justice League, see what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. Because I actually, we did that not too long ago with, oh, some superhero movie. Ghost Rider? <laughs> yeah, we did with Ghost Rider. <laughs> Holy shit. Ghost Rider. That was so rad. Yeah. <laughs> I take it all back. The Ghost Rider needs to be in the movie. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh, what are some of those lines um, that he said? Because oh, I need to go and rewatch it. Like, that movie was so bad. It was amazing. Which, which, which Ghost Rider film? The first the, one? Yeah, oh, yeah. Sam the, Elliott is the OG. Yeah. The, or, or, or Nicolas Cage first Ghost Rider film. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the his, Nick, all right. Because if Nick you Cage really are. want really interesting choices, you got to see the sequel. Oh, God. Uh, it is. If you thought the first one, yo, if you thought the first one was bad, you got to see the sequel. <laughs> oh, I'm excited now. I got to see it. My f- oh, but because my they, favorite thing they about just, the first one was the ending because they're like, all right, Ghost Rider, you're done. And like Satan comes back and he's like, you're done. Thanks for all your hard work. And now you can go and live your life freely with your new beautiful wife. 
And then Nick Cage like turns to the camera and he's like, "Hell no!" And then Satan's like, "Oh, Ghost Rider, I'll get you yet!" And then like goes away, and that's the movie. And I was like, yeah. "This is fantastic." <laughs> In uh, the the sequel, I mean, they just basically said, "What do you feel like doing, Nick Cage?" Oh, chewing the scenery. Okay, good. We'll just film that. <laughs> yes, I need it right now. I'm gonna go buy it. <laughs> oh, oh man. man, so good. It's yeah. It's a metaphor for not the bees, basically. <laughs> no, anything but the bees. The entire in the entire movie, <laughs> it's just the whole metaphor for not the bees. Uh, we could just talk about Nick Cage, just just, <laughs> just the whole. Oh God! Let let let's, let's save that for a focused cast. Yeah. Oh, the we best of Nick Cage. I'm fucking down. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, put that one. Put that one in the pocket. That's right, okay. man. Close to the chest on that one. There you go. Oh man. Okay. There you go. So now we'll get to the hoopty. We'll get to the biggin. So new Star Wars trailer dropped. Mm. Star yep. Wars: Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. And and internet's going crazy. People are going nuts. What do y'all think of it? Surprisingly, I did not do a reaction video, but I was um, I was I had the shocks at the same times as the trailer portrayed it. So yeah. it caught my interest. I'm excited. I'm really excited for it. I haven't watched the trailer yet, so. <laughs> and we were telling Mori, I need to watch it before. You should have watched it too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's God damn it, Todd. Hey, oh, Yano here, man. <laughs> Yano, Yano, Todd. <laughs> I mean, okay, so. I guess I'm I'm bad in this sense too. I still haven't seen Force Awakens. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just like, oh, I could watch that, but then that's going to kind of blah, 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 and so on and mm-hmm. so forth. And it really just comes down to me being lazy and not wanting to go and sit there and watch a trailer like that. Sure, just yeah. like, oh, because I, oh, I don't want to get hyped for something and then have, mm-hmm. because, I mean, I, I growing up, I got burned really bad by, by Star Wars. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. a lot of us did. Yeah. I mean, I you know, you talked about the original box set that was released. Well, the box set that was released uh, oh, the time it. Of Menace oh, the, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And that was, I think you said, your first introduction to Star Wars or, or something, yeah, it was, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that VHS, uh, it was called, it was in 1996. And it was whenever they brought the original trilogy back to theaters for a limited time. And mm. they called it the the, the, the special edition yes. because they fucking added all the CG. That's shit. right. And then it, uh, on the twentieth, it was twentieth century Fox, and they came out with two different versions. One was the I think the silver box with like silver Darth Vader's. Kind of, yeah, 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 that was gold yeah widescreen. exactly. So yeah, like that one was widescreen, and then yeah, full screen and widescreen. And each one of those before the movie had like a five or 10 minute interview with George Lucas. And it was some mm-hmm. duder that did the interview, like some local <laughs> like movie review schmuck from like a Californian public access show. And he's like, I'm here with George Lucas. And then, <laughs> and then you know, of course, it was just about as riveting as any other George Lucas interview where it's like, so tell me a bit about why you wanted to go and revisit, uh, you know, Star Wars. He's like, well... Um, you know, there was uh, some things I wanted to put in there, and uh, we put them in there. <laughs> well, thanks, George <laughs> Lucas. Like, the whole it was terrible, and compelling. <laughs> it, oh, it's very visceral, <laughs> engaging. If you ever need some way to get to sleep, pop on the director's <laughs> commentary oh, for George any of the Lucas first movie. three, actually, <laughs> any of the, the initial six, Lucas. Um, Star Wars films, oh. they will put you the fuck oh. to sleep. Well, and what's <laughs> so staggering, and like, you, go, you know, studying film and going to film school and stuff, there's something that they teach you. In film school, 101 is, and it sounds fucking obvious, it sounds super obvious, but it's like two main rules of being a film director. Number one, know your content before you start shooting. 
Mm-hmm. Number two, let the actors act. Mm-hmm. George Lucas does neither one of these things. So yep. right. whatever in all of his interviews, he goes, you know what? What I like to do, I like to shoot around the movie. And then I find the movie in editing. Like, I'll go in and whenever we edit it together, that's when the movie's made. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you edit it in your mind before you start shooting. Like, what are you doing? Like, so he's shooting yeah. around the movie and hoping for the best. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the director's commentary for I think it's Empire. He's talking about how, uh, no, it was a uh, director's commentary for Phantom Menace. He's talking about how, not like, oh, well, this is what we're trying to get out of, out of the uh, performance or whatnot. He's just like, in this scene, we use this style lens to yeah. film at this angle and do this. Mm. And you're just like, well, Ooh. I want an insight on the fucking movie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he's just like, but we decided that we were going to switch over to this angle and use this lens instead because you get to see more of the wonderful set dressings we've done. And yeah. I'm like, the f- it was it was like sobering. And then the other thing he does is if you go and look at the behind the scenes of him working with any actor in the world, like people talk mm-hmm. shit on Hayden Christensen. I think he's a great actor. Mm-hmm. People talk shit on Natalie Portman. Fantastic actors. Like you had fucking, yo, know, uh, Jimmy Smith. You had Sammy J. You had uh, you had everybody, man. Ian McDermott. You had uh, fucking Sir Alec Guinness. Like Jesus Christ. You have Ewan McGregor. A Shakespearean actor, a dude who is legit, like, that dude does Shakespeare. And he comes off as a dud in these movies. And the reason why is the way George Lucas directs is he's like, all right, uh, you and McGregor, I want you to stand like this. And then I want you to look like that. And then I want you to look over here. And then I want you to say this line. All right, action. So your actors aren't able to act. They're just mimicking what the director just did. Like, oh, he wanted me to stand here? Wait, and he wanted me to look this way? So it, that's ne- you never mimic to an actor. Whenever you give direction to a film actor, you say something like, can you do that again, but you're slightly more angry? Like, do it, do it a little more angry. Or do it, do it, you know, you're going through a lot right now. There's a lot on your plate. Just do this and feel a little more overwhelmed. When you say the line, you give them a direction like here's the emotional context of what you need to portray. Now, please portray it to the best of your ability. Not I want you to stand here and I want you to do a 180 spin and then I want you to do some jumping jacks and then you're going to do a handstand and then you're going to say this line and then throw a thumbs up to camera B. Like (laughs) that's not directing like you're just telling people what to do. And that's a whole different thing. And that's why they fucking come off as bored and dead and just that whole movie feels very flat is because they're just trying to remember what the fuck George Lucas told them to do. Um, yeah. They're like, well, did I say that right? Was that the line? Like, they're <laughs> so worried about how am I sitting and where am I looking and all this. They can't get into the moment. So I mean, I guess I, I, I guess that's why it was so much easier with the original trilogy, because most of them were, you know allegedly doped up most of the time. So taking <laughs> yeah, directions like right. whatever. Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, oh, it's true. Oh, it's um, absolutely true. Um, that's, no. that's not an alleged. She oh, flat out said she that. She was, right? Yeah, Dang. Like, you got her ultimate warrior on? Oh, in a big way. <laughs> Hogan. 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 <laughs> Uh, yep. but, but yeah, so that's one of those deals, but to tie it back to last <laughs> Jedi, tie us back to last Jedi. Mm-hmm. So the only problem I have with this trailer and like, overall, I liked it. I liked the vibe. I liked the little thing that was next to Chewbacca and he like goes Wah! or whatever noise he made. It made me laugh. Oh, yeah. So like, I'm all in that little guy. What's his name? A porg. Or something like that's like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like a little penguin hamster. Yeah, yeah, he's like a guinea pig, but like a penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So he does the scream. Yeah, I was like, Digimon. yeah, right. He's my favorite Pokemon. Um, he <laughs> he's there and he yells with Chewbacca, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, I'm I I get it. Like, yeah, I'm a fan of Ewoks. I'm one of those guys. Like, I think they serve the purpose well. So go for it. And you know, then you see all your the hot hits, and you see, uh, you know. Luke saying, hey, I've only seen this type of the forest once before, 
and it didn't scare me before, but mm-hmm. it scares me now. Like, all right, so now, you know, Luke's seen some shit, and now he's worried, so we should be worried. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's, you know, you're setting the tone. If you shook Luke, if you shook Luke, Luke yeah. then... Uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. man. You shook the shock, shock master, and that's what... <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's what that's what happened. Like it's on another level, and uh, so, but but the one complaint I have is we all absolutely know for certain what they're teasing at the end of the trailer is not going to fucking happen. Oh yeah, no way. Nah. They are not going to make Ray turn to the dark side in the second fucking movie. It's not going to happen. That's their that's their Disney princess. That's their they're gonna sell blankets and toys and mm-hmm. also it's like turning John Cena. The shit is that is sailed. <laughs> yeah. Ray is not gonna turn. I guarantee it. You can quote me right now. We'll timestamp that shit. Uh, and I will all PayPal you money for a beer if I'm wrong. <laughs> I promise mm-hmm. you, it won't happen. Disney's not dumb enough. To be like, yeah, you know that the awesome girl and woman power and feminism and, you know, we're going on all these morning shows and Ellen, let's turn her into the bad guy. Uh, nope. <laughs> Not touching that with a 10-foot pole. So the fact that they're hyping that up kind of upsets me. Because you're going to mm-hmm. piss off a lot of people. They're going to mm-hmm. expect, they're going to have an expectation of like, well, maybe this story is going to go crazy. Maybe she's going to pull a Hell Hydra and... Uh, it ain't gonna happen. I guarantee you, it yeah. ain't gonna happen. Um, now, what would be interesting is if they turned Finn. Like mm. that's where you start getting into some cool shit. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, maybe Finn wants to be somebody. He's trying to fight Phasma or whatever her name is, mm-hmm. and you know he realizes that he's kind of weak and he needs a little more power. What's he gonna do? And then Kylo Ren, master of the dark side, says, hey, man, I, I got your back. I know how you feel. You want to be stronger. Well, just come with, just hang out. I'm not telling you. You don't have to sign on the timeshare. Just come hang out for a right. little bit. Just come to the place. We'll just crack open a beer and talk about it. And, like, get that storyline going. And then you yeah. start building up that Ray versus Finn. Like, that's your. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's your money <laughs> ticket for the next movie. It's like, oh, the yeah. two good guys, but now one's bad. And can Ray is Ray strong enough in the forest to be able to save her friend, the one person course, that really believed in her? Of course, it would be the bad guy because, oh man, America twenty seventeen. <laughs> Subtext. <laughs> Some boardroom executives like this is genius, and we'll have him kneel during the national anthem. <laughs> oh, you're right. What? <laughs> have him have his full name be Kaepernick. Finn. <laughs> yeah, make him get a make him get a Muslim name. Make him pull a like Cassius Clay. Yeah. <laughs> Draft jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Draft jumper. It's like Star Killer. Uh, yeah. Skywalker. Yeah. Star Killer. Yeah. Draft jumper. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, I I was reading on a hypothesis that like that end scene was, and they did the bond computer already like an uh, introduction to like the gray side. Oh, huh. like, no light, no dark, like the gray side. Like, because I I yeah. think Luke was like on a thing where he's like, to get to to get rid of all of this, the Jedi needs to die, sort of thing. Yeah. And then I see the scene, and it was like you know, reaching the hand out, like, oh, are they gonna? be in the middle and just right. do the, you know do whatever yeah. they want sort of thing but not be exactly light or dark yeah. but they're chaotic that, that what, would, is it, would just, what is it yeah. in D D? they're like chaotic neutral uh, or something neutral yeah the yeah, chaotic like crazy that. neutral like where there's no real rules but they kind of know where their moral compass is um yeah yeah they because kylo is dealing with like like you know he he wasn't sure, uh, at least with the trailer, he's he's having like hesitation of shooting, you know, his mom's ship down, sort of thing. Yeah. But there's always hypothesis about the whole scene with, um, you know, Force Awakens. Like if Kylo actually did push the button, or, you know, if Han pushed the button actually, just so mm. 
Yeah. They say they think he can fulfill the mission sort of thing, you know, right. but don't know. Yeah. But it was interesting. It was an interesting thought that a gray side can be introduced, but it was, I think it was, it's being debunked. Yeah. And I, and the one thing that I hope is do, do we all have like a, and, and Todd, this may not even mean a single lick of anything to you. Uh, Cause you haven't <laughs> seen force awakens, but so do we have like, do we think that with the Snoke character, they're going to like make Snoke <laughs> into somebody like, Oh no, <laughs> Snoke's actually Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, do you think they're going <laughs> to, Pull that type of shit, or is Snoke just a guy? <laughs> He's just a guy to me right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you yeah. if you delve into like the lore that was completely destroyed by uh, Disney, yeah. by Disney, by Disney, yeah. um, there was a lot they could have done with the Snoke character. Yeah. Um, but I. I mean, I, I kind of want to go Knights of the Old Republic with this and mm -hmm. say there's a chance they may be trying to introduce a true Sith. Well, and which would be what is thing. what is interesting about that is they are bringing in some of that. Uh, without giving it away, like they're, they're, they're trying to bring in because even in Force Awakens, they talk a little bit about you know old masters and old dark side masters and mm -hmm. they mm. kind of hint and nudge and wink about revan and yeah. so there because uh, like okay extended universe stuff i i super wanted force awakens to be like the first book of the thrawn trilogy because the thrawn trilogy mm -hmm. is fucking outstanding um it it's a story about Luke going rogue. Um, he had, well, he actually turns to the dark side, I think, like full on, hmm. and then starts training young kids to be dark side Jedi. Uh, like it goes like almost pure, like snidely whiplash evil. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've read them, but there's a lot going on there. And then Luke, uh, or let's see, uh, Han and Leia have a son who fights Luke. Like, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a repeat almost of the original type dynamic, but now you have all this background history from all the characters that are involved. So it changes it up quite a bit. Like it was really interesting takes on some of this stuff. Um, and it seems like they're cherry picking some of it. They're like, this, right. this was right. good about the Thrawn trilogy and this was good about it. And Oh, Revan. Yeah. Everyone loves Revan. Let's. So yeah. I, or like, is Snoke going to end up being like Yoda? Or something, you you know, like, are they gonna try to? Everybody, they're gonna pull a Metal Gear, and everybody's related to everybody. Like, and it's Big Boss. Yeah, but not the real Big Boss. This one's the other Big Boss that we burned in the fourth yeah. game. But the fourth <laughs> game, See, yeah, like the only problem with them doing that though is the whole uh, followers of the Living Force thing mm -hmm. that they alluded to in the pre sequels with, um, you know, Qui Gon and. And Obi Wan being practitioners of such, yeah. as well as Yoda. So oh, right. I mean, that's why we got Force Ghosts. So yeah, midichlorians and yeah, yeah. all that the shit. Fucking whatever the bullshit was. Yeah, it's the cells. It's Night of the Round. Your cell, yeah. Your cells are more adaptable to the Force. So <laughs> your your DNA, you're genetically engineered to fucking know how to open <laughs> doors without using your hands, like. <laughs> this is so dumb like that's another thing about George Lucas it's like you had this great like religion-esque everything is a living thing and it emits energy and you can tune into the energy and understand the world around you and like wow that's great and then he's like but actually it's in your bloodstream and you're like uh, nope nope just don't even like shh don't talk about it like just make it a thing <laughs> Right. But give kids hope that there's a better tomorrow. No, but you're born into it, see? No, don't. Because some kids won't be born into it, clearly. Like, uh, it's starting to sound like Nazi talk. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, well, that's, we, it's a certain, that's the chosen ones. You're, you're force adept. Uh, it, that's where it started getting gross. Like, genuinely, it started getting gross. 
and it missed the point. Like, how can a creator of a thing completely fucking miss the point of what made it popular in the first place? I have no idea. I'm, st- I'm blown away by it. Like, no, I'm no, no, still no. blown away by it. And, you know, people are going to talk smack on, like, J.J. Abrams directing and all this stuff. At least J.J. Abrams makes a movie that makes sense and leaves you with a sense of wonderment afterwards. Like, tell me what sense of wonderment <laughs> you had after Attack of the Clones. Nothing. You just saw Hayden Christensen yeah. cry for two hours, and then he, he ch- chopped up people because they killed his mom and then he's like oh hi uh padme you look real pretty today and yeah. that was the whole movie i just yeah. said the whole movie in about 15 <laughs> seconds but it took us three and a half hours to get there you know to get there right <sighs> like i i actually liked episode three i thought that was the strongest of the prequels um because shit actually happened and we we saw some stuff mm-hmm. like you always heard about the battle between obi-wan and, you know, and Anakin on Mustafar, you always heard about it, mm. whether it's through books or like even I think Sir Alec Guinness mentioned it or something like there's some they mentioned it sometime somewhere. And it was like, oh, I wonder what happened there that they fought. And there's a big lightsaber fight. And this is how I got disfigured. And oh, what happened? So you finally get to see it. You're like, OK, here's the thing. Um, so there was a payoff there. But like, you know, Phantom Menace. Darth Maul saved that movie. And mm-hmm. Attack of the Clones was just awful. It was it was really bad. Mm-hmm. Oh. So you got I do love I just love Yoda. That's all. You know, you know the, the only scene in love. You know how stormtroopers? Well they're all they're all somehow yeah. cloned they're from all, Django Fett. They're all Samoan. Then why the fuck do they are they terrible shots? Django Fett was an awesome shot. Well, <laughs> yeah. you see, because the, every time they made new ones, it got further from the DNA of the clone. Then why make them clones? Well, I mean, you uh, see, it was also like, the simple fact of them kind of rushing their development too. There was that, mm-hmm. but yeah, meh. right. I mean, what are you going to I mean, do? they didn't have chance to like actually train. They were just kind of grown like, oh, you're an adult now. There you go. Yeah. You have an yeah. army. All the Django Fett's running around. And then, yeah. and then here's the other thing. Why is Boba Fett so mad when his dad dies? There's five million of his dad <laughs> running around. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fucking don't get butter, kid. Only one. Like, just get <laughs> any of the other ones. Like, you're fine. <laughs> I'll yeah. get you yet, you Jedi. <laughs> Mace Windu. Oh, like, <laughs> but that's the type of stuff. It's like, come on, man. Like, you gotta, you gotta sweat the details. The beauty of these movies, of like Star Wars and shit, is all the little intricacies and how they kind of all work together to make something bigger. What is that called? Like the Gestalt theory that you know the the end product is greater than the sum of its parts, right? So you have all these little tiny details, but it makes this big, expansive world that you can escape yourself in and you feel so good. And you're like, oh, man, you know what? This is great. And I'm going to live my life in a way that I'm, I'm one with the force. And I'm going to do everything in my power to live the best life possible and be nice to my fellow human. And it's going to be great. And then they start getting that type of shit. And you're like, oh, it's, it's like kind of what happened with The Matrix, right? Like yeah. That first Matrix movie, still a killer. That is that is still, you know, top tier shit in my opinion. Um, the the way they brought about all those, you know, fairly complex ideas and made them digestible, and you know, oh, the human body is a battery, and you're like, that's a neat mm-hmm. idea. Like y- you took it from all these like Nietzsche and all that stuff, but you made it in such a way that people can relate more to it. Um, and then you look at the world around you different, and you know, act as if and all that stuff. And then Matrix Reloaded comes out. Then it's like, well, what was their favorite part about it? All the Agent Smiths. No, not really, <laughs> but whatever. Like once the again, yeah, the Wachowskis just they they didn't get it. Uh, they or they were so far in their own ass about like we built this brilliant philosophy. So now let's explain every waking moment. Of all of this. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, uh, a little goes a long way, man. It's like soy sauce. Just kind of sprinkle that <laughs> shit in there. 
Like you just gotta. <laughs> there you go. You can't. You just putting a gallon of soy sauce in your fucking fried rice. It's not gonna. Oh, dude, it's not no. gonna taste good. <laughs> You're gonna die. Yeah, that's right. The sodium. You're gonna heart's gonna explode <laughs> inside your fucking chest. <laughs> like uh, drinking sea uh, seawater. I'm sorry. And it, she's not gonna throw out like Aquaman in that seawater. It's just you're, you're just gonna die, <laughs> just straight up dead. Uh, like, you know, oh, you know what we should talk about with the Matrix, the Architect. Oh, like oh god, god. that scene, that scene. <laughs> like what the the Oracle was so fucking great, right? Because the Oracle was like, "Hey, don't worry about the vase," and he's like, "What vase?" Turns around, knocks the vase over, breaks it. And he was like, well, how did you know? And then she was like, I'm really going to take you for a loop. If I didn't say anything, would you have broke it? And then he's like, oh, my God. Like, it, it, like your mind, like, blows <laughs> from all this shit. You're like, like holding Big time Oracle. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And, like, that's how the Oracle should be. Not, I'm going to go into the room, and Colonel Sanders mm-hmm. is there, and he's going to tell me about how he built, well, I had this idea for a world. And it's like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I was thinking about that. Uh, that parody, parody scene. I was like, "Who did that scene?" <laughs> I need to watch this again. So, so for those of you that don't know, I just found the uh, Will Ferrell as the architect. Oh, I think it was like, yeah. what was it? Some MTV music award yeah, yeah, or movie, something that uh, happened like awards. long yeah. time ago. Super oh long time my ago. goodness! Oh, <laughs> oh man. But like I was gonna say, while we were talking about Star Wars, if if like because Todd is posting pictures on the chat, if you can find uh, the hypothesis that Snoke was a uh, was a sto- was a stormtrooper that bumped his head in the first Star Wars movie, <laughs> which is why he has that head head injury, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I wish, man. I found the YouTube video. Oh, you found the YouTube video. <laughs> Oh, oh man, that's fantastic! I man. hope it is too, just to spite everybody. Just I kind of hope yeah. that's where they go with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like don't sweat the details, man. Just keep stuff open ended, and that's what was so fucking great about Blade Runner. Holy shit! Like they got it. <laughs> they go. they, they literally understood what made Blade Runner so good, and they didn't fuck with it. You know? Yeah, like. How hard is that? <laughs> it's super easy to make stuff open ended. It's really difficult to write yourself in such a fucking hole that you have to like explain the nature of the universe. Like, d- don't. <laughs> like, you could have ju- hit the eject button a long time ago before we got here. Like, we don't need an architect to explain the matrix. I thought the whole appeal of the matrix is that we're in the matrix. Mm-hmm. So why would I want to know how the sausage is made? I don't. I want to fucking eat it. I don't care. Yeah, It's delicious. I can live in ignorance. That's my choice. That's part of the fucking movie. Be the battery. That's it. So, like, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> With the circles around it. I like that. It's been the new <laughs> thing in Facebook. Like, check this out. And it's like a picture of a bird. Yeah. And, but there's a big giant arrow pointing at the bird. It's like that's the only thing in the picture. I can't help but look at the fucking bird. Yeah. Why are you pointing at it? Like I don't need a circle around a bird. Oh man. Oh man. It's so good. But anyways, movies are great. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my you sound convinced. That's my segue. That's it. <laughs> That's, great. That's, my, that's great <laughs> storytelling mechanisms. Let's hope for those Rotten Tomato scores coming in on blast. Um, right. Uh, so, so Marco, tell me about this YouTube, Facebook, <laughs> something. Something's going down. Oh man. So, uh, I I'm trying to grasp grasp around it myself. Okay. So okay. Just doing my usual YouTube thing, um, I feel like I'm hitting a little hurdle because, you know, subscriptions are not really going up as I like. And, you know, views are getting there, but it could deserve it. It can get a uh, get a push. Sure, right? sure. So I, I look at Facebook. I look at I actually found like a discord group and such. But I look at Facebook 
I just typed in YouTuber and groups. And there's a lot of groups uh, of uh, YouTubers mm -hmm. that uh, will, you know, get together. And some of these groups will be legit, legitimate, and, like, try to say, like, you know, you can post your videos, you know, support whoever you can, and, uh, you know, ask for criticism or ask, you know, ask if there's anybody that can help with, like, banner art and all that stuff. So oh, super yeah. con like constructive and helpful groups, sure. right? Yeah. And then you were the red light district of <laughs> groups uh, that has, like, Sub for sub, yeah. uh, view for view, yeah. comment for comment. Buy you want to buy subscriptions? It's a hundred hundred rupees. Hello, yeah. fr hello, friend. You want <laughs> yeah. my friend, my friend, my friend. You want YouTube views? <laughs> you want YouTube views? Sub for sub, and it, it, it's all that is. So, I, I, yeah, like I said, I joined, I joined groups. I just joined a bunch of them. Just, just the, my reasoning is just I'm putting my videos out there on tw on Twitter. Yeah. I, and I only do it once. I'm not spamming it. Right? right, right, sure. You know, which I have a thing about, like, either, you know, promote it to a point where you don't, you don't annoyingly spam it, spam people. So I put it in these groups, and I don't want to put it in my personal Facebook because I don't want to annoy people with all this stuff, and then they defriend me and all that yeah. such. Anyways, yeah, I join these groups. I post my videos in there. It's like, hey, you know, if you just like the things that I like, you know, be sure to, you know, you know, watch it. It'll be great. You know, if you can like the video, that'd be great. If you can comment, that'd be great. If you can subscribe, that'd be awesome. Uh, but because I'm joining all these groups, I'm still, I'm weeding through the sub for sub uh, post and, and view for root view sort of thing. And sub and view for, for view uh, posts are, I, I took a look at them and see what it's, what it's about. Mm. And, they can have like harsh, like conditions. Like okay, like uh, somebody will post, uh, "I'm free for the whole day, so post your links." Okay, well, okay, uh, I'll go do that. So I'll post the link. Hey, this is my video. Appreciate any, any kind of support. And then the next post will be the response of that person saying, "I will watch your video, but you need to watch my video first. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> uh, post a screenshot saying that you you watched the video and liked my video. And have your driver's video. license oh, with today's oh. today's paper <laughs> yeah. and hold it up." Uh, and one hundred and ninety-seven dollars, and just get it set up, you know, and transfer to the the ransomware on your computer right now. Yeah, Jeez, call this one eight hundred. So I'm like, <laughs> unlock your phones. So, yeah, yeah. So as far as as open and honest as I will be, as far as I will go is I will watch the video. I could put it on. I could put it on as like background noise, right? I could put it on my phone, you know, click on the video, <laughs> do my work, and then. Let the video play and put like, and I'll make a comment. Like if there's something con constructive about it, I'll you know say a comment. Or if I can say, hey, keep keep up the good work, I'll definitely say that too. Yeah. But um, I will not tread the line of sub for sub because uh, that doesn't mean anything. And it is actually, I believe, it is actually against the terms of service. Yeah, it is on YouTube. Yeah, it's the same thing for uh, to be doing that Twitter and stuff too. Yeah. 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 So. I'm trying not to do that. My main thing is just spreading my videos to these people that may be interested in it or maybe not, yeah. uh, but they can watch it. And if they want to do what they want to do, then fine. I'm, I'm not saying you got to do all these conditions. Oh yeah. Uh, no way. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's outrageous. Um, because yeah. And the, you can always tell the people that will use a service like that because like my, mm -hmm. for instance, yeah. mine's like, you could see Twitter people that do like, Oh, if you, you know, follow me, I'll follow you back because you'll look and mm -hmm. this person has a blue yeah. check mark and they have like 1.8 million followers and you're like, Holy mm -hmm. shit, this person's legit. And then it looks like they're following 1.6 million people. And you're like, Oh, okay. Oh, I, I, I see what's going on here. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. They're not even like ashamed about yeah. it, and then Twitter rewards them. So whatever, but it's yeah, just, you give them a blue check mark and two eighty and such. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, like you can be a beta yeah. tester. Here, why don't you just run <laughs> Twitter for a while? Come on in the office. We can right. get you set up with some hot pockets, and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm still at one forty. Yeah. Um. I, so am I. Yep. Well, just, I just so, had to check. So <laughs> I check every five minutes. I literally do that every five minutes. Just like, okay, let me just check. 
you see the tweet, uh, try to, as if I'm going to make a tweet, like 140. Nope. All right. Back out. Yep. Yep. Back to, back to promoting my videos, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing that. Uh, and I, I have actually seen significant, like significant growth because I'm finding the people I'm actually networking, which is the thing yeah. I didn't do at the start of my channel. I was, right. I'm actually networking with people. It's like, hey, you know, the people with a similar interest, they actually like the stuff. They'll comment. They'll do. The, they'll support. It, which is fine. That's great. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Discord. There was like a Discord YouTube channel, but like it's, it's really weird because every time I'm in there, there's drama. And there's actually, like, like the whole sub, for sub rules, they have rules in, the, in it themselves just to be structured in a sense. But yeah. it really, it's just, I feel like I'm the oldest one there and everybody's like in their teens. Probably so. That's all that's they do is like Snapchat in <laughs> class. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, and I'm actually going to Reddit now just to see. I'm full blown promoting my stuff just because I, I, I don't know. I'm. I think like this whole a thousand scri- subscribers thing is actually like driving me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Too much. And with you, it's within uh, grasp. I want to move forward. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And and the thing is. Yours is the type of content, and I'm, I mean, I think everybody, you know, like Todd, Moriarty's, like, I, I think that's the type of content that survives. Like, it has, yeah, it has a long tail. So, like, someone will go and watch one of Moriarty's, like, newer streams and then be like, well, this was mm-hmm. cool. I wonder what she was doing eight months ago or whatever. And yeah. then go back and watch an archive and then be like, this is just as good. You know, and then, hey, yeah. I, you got a new follower, you got a new subscriber, you got, you know, that's how it naturally builds. And there's nothing wrong with, like, tooting your own horn every once in a while, because it's all stuff that needs to be seen. It's all stuff that warrants mm-hmm. being seen. And, like, it's good to be proud of the stuff. Like, I, I still haven't got off my butt and actually, like, pushed and, like, marketed. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the next step, I think, is, like, I'm actually going to start be like, hey, I have 600 fucking YouTube videos. And, yeah. like... <laughs> Uh, literally i think it's like 560 something like it's ridiculous yeah um and like some of them are an hour long some of them are you know 12 15 minutes long like heavily edited so there's in quote unquote there's something for everybody but it's all the unboxing videos like that's the thing right now that's the thing that's getting all the traction and that my my channel's going heavy on it because I'm like, sure, let's bring those people in and then hope they stick around. It's like kind of having the impulse buys yeah. at the grocery store. It's like, sure, they're going to come in yeah. for the milk, but I wonder if I can get them on the candy bar. Like, I, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, two units per transaction, those UPTs, get them. Get, See, get, but, but at the same time, and, and you know better than anybody, you don't want to be stuck doing one thing bingo. constantly. Yes. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like we, we don't need another Skyrim situation, yeah. basically. Right. Where it's yeah. just you're locked in and like, yeah. And like, Todd, the, you don't need to be the Vampire the Masquerade guy. Exactly. Like, it's great. Exactly. And you're good at it. And that's what's going to drive mm-hmm. eyes. And, you know, that's it. Um, and like in Marco, you don't want to be the Suicoden or the Yakuza guy. Like, those are things. Right. You I don't love. want to be the mobile guy. It, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be fucking yeah. real steel robot fighting or whatever the. the... <laughs> right. Dude, that has like a million video. views, dude. That's uh, ridiculous. <laughs> that, that's the thing. I don't want my most popular, like, videos to be the, the thing that gets me the money. Like, dude, I, I have all these other videos yeah. that can kind of do the same thing and more up to date. Right. Yes. I'm honing my craft here. Yeah. <laughs> so like I want to push those. It's videos. true, man. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And like and the new stuff, and I think for all of us, our new stuff's way fucking better than our old stuff. Like it's oh, <laughs> it's gosh. just that's how it is. We've mm. we've all grown mm-hmm. so much as like content creators and producers and stuff that we kind of know the game now. Um yeah. but what's drawn mm-hmm. people's eyes in is like a six and a half year old video, and the comment is this sucks. I know. Like, watch the new <laughs> shit. It's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. just come I mean, on this I, way. I still get comments on a video I did of a tutorial to get a mod loader working back when there was only one thing that had a mod loader <laughs> oh, for, man. for Vampire. And it's just like, oh, this doesn't work. Well, did you have the... Because, like, I have all the links to the old mods and shit. Yeah. And it's oh, like, right. all the new versions have come out. And you don't need to go through this fucking... Yeah. Yeah, and this is, garbage yeah. anymore. And this is also made for Windows XP. Like, get yeah, right. into the fucking <laughs> like we're at Windows ten. Ninety five. Like, come on, yeah. <laughs> you have it on like an Apple II DOS computer, and like yeah. it's oh, yeah. perfect. Um, 
but but yeah, like that's one of those things is getting eyes on the product is hard enough, but like getting people on board with the overall idea, damn near impossible. And, and mm. I, I think I've made, and I don't know if we've, we've talked about it or, but I've made complete peace with myself that if I literally just make content for you guys, like in this discord and like the seven or eight people that normally watch my stream, I'll die mm. happy. Like I could perpetually go the rest of my life with eight live viewers for every one of my streams. And I'm great. That's awesome. Right. See, like, and, and I kind of feel the same way in that sense. Um, personally, like just doing content and, you know, I can't, like I see the same people almost every, every stream. Mm -hmm. So it's just mm -hmm. like every now and then somebody new will pop in and it's just like, Oh, hi, welcome. Yeah. Where, how'd you, you find us? Yeah. What, uh, <laughs> how'd you get here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true though. It's like, that's, that's kind of the beauty of it is, you know, beforehand, whenever we were trying to go full time and making the push for it, we were trying to appease everybody and get everybody in there. And like, mm -hmm. if, if you if you have, you know, a way to communicate and you enjoy video games, come on to this stream. Like, mm -hmm. that's not a target market. You know, you're not you're not really yeah, yeah. honing in on who you want as your fan base. And but yeah. now, you know, people will be like, oh, don't be an echo chamber. Don't make don't make content for the same five people. I'm like, why not? Why not? They like I it. mean, arguably, like if and I'm not sure your standpoint on this. The content I make is what I feel like doing. <laughs> like, oh, sure. It doesn't it right, doesn't even right. matter. Like, the, you know, I can count on those same people coming regardless yes. of if I'm doing vampire, I'm doing dream daddy. If I'm doing Friday the 13th yeah. this Friday. Oh, to my own horn. There you go. Little there plug, you go. Plug. Line it up. <laughs> well, Line I mean, so, so I mean, like, uh, obviously recording this before the 13th and obviously Friday the 13th is going to be a big thing. Maury and I are going to be streaming that. And mm. then they got the big stack up event going on too Ooh, yeah. with mm -hmm. the uh, game. So, yeah, I mean, uh, was a gun media said that they're going to match $3,000 worth of the donations. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. So, I mean, that's actually pretty cool. That's great. Absolutely. Um, cool. Yeah. And it's, yeah, make it for the same people, you know, make, because they're there, they're there for Todd. They're not there to watch yep. Vampire the Masquerade. They've seen me play it a thousand fucking times. Bingo. Yes, exactly. And I still tune in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, because you have a vibe, you have a certain calling that you, you, you know, you emit a certain personality that attracts people in. And then they, they want to be there. Um, they want to be there to hang out. They want to meet other like-minded people that also find you entertaining and they find yeah. the content good and they find, you know, they believe in the goal and the goal is just to build that tight knit, whether it's big or small community. Um, that's what it's about. And I mean, that's what it's a self-perpetuating machine. Right. See, and, and the thing is, and I think you guys touched on it in an earlier uh, brothering around where it's, you know, from from my standpoint anyway, I see myself not so much like growing a community, but I'd much rather use my community to help other streamers that I enjoy, kind of like a mm -hmm. talent scout in oh, a sense, absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's a powerful thing because you know, we'll we'll get comments about, you know, and I mean I've even heard people like DM and me asking about, so what do you guys use to record the podcast? And I was like, Oh, we just do discord chat. And then we use open broadcast software the same. We would, you know, it's very open about the stuff. It's like, we just do that and then just put the archive on YouTube. And then I put it in audacity, upload it to the Amazon server. And now it's on iTunes. Like there's no secrets. Um, but they're like, Oh, well we like the format and we want to try our hand at a podcast. Go right ahead. And I was like, that's the best compliment you could possibly give anyone is like yeah. because they've heard us or they're familiar with the way we do content they want to try it themselves and a lot of people will be you know you listen to some big timers you know people that kind of oh well my secrets are safe with me and you're not going to compete with me how dare you i'm not giving away yeah. my trade secrets and it's like fuck off like who are you you know <laughs> it's, it, this is all about having people embrace kind of things they want to do and if listening to our show or watching one of our streams or, you know, hanging out on YouTube or like what have you gets you that little spark 
of like, maybe I could do this. Do it. Like, no. don't even wait. Just fucking go out and buy a webcam tomorrow. Go buy a microphone. Go get, do it. Do it and fail horribly. Like, and the thing is, is you don't need the best equipment not either. All. Like, like there's no. so many people that are just like, oh, like when I started streaming, like I'm, I'm using this basically the same setup I've been using and people are like, oh, what kind of lights are you using? And I'm like, I'm using a flexible five head floor lamp. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, oh, what at the time, like, oh, what are you using for your green screen? A red bed sheet, like across my wall. I mean, that's what I was using. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what kind of microphone? Do you got yourself a Yeti? I'm like, no, I got myself a Rock Band 2 mic. Yeah. And they're like, are fucking what? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you just got to... The thing's durable. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, you do it with what you do it with. It's uh, it's yeah. not a... Yeah. Yeah. It, it, whatever asset you have, just go ahead and use it. Um, mm -hmm. And that I think that's the most important thing is like, you got to start somewhere. Just start. Just go. Yeah. Just just get after it. And the thing is, the first few times you do it, you are going to fucking suck. Oh, my God. You're going to be so bad at it. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. It's just like anything. Like, go in front of a piano. And if you've never played piano before, try to play a song. You're going to be really bad at it. But you keep practicing. You keep doing those hand movements. You keep learning more about it. You keep, you know, designing stuff. You keep doing hand exercises, doing these chord shapes. You're going to start playing songs after a while. <laughs> You know, yeah. and that that's just how you start and learn anything. It's, you just got to do it. Like, who cares what people think? Here's the thing. Yeah. In my opinion, go make a shitty Twitch channel. Go <laughs> make a shitty YouTube. Go make a shitty podcast. You want to know why? Because there are hundreds of thousands of shitty of all of those things. There's thousands of shitty YouTube sh streamers. There's thousands. Thousands. And here's the thing. Who cares? Who cares? Like... Let them do them. If they just want to be a weekend warrior, stream once a month, once a year. Shit. They just want to do it on like 4th of July. That's their day. They want to stream on the 4th of July. Go for it. Like everyone's goals about this whole shindig are different. And whenever I hear advice given about like, well, what you got to do is, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, that really shady thing Marco was talking about on Facebook. Well, you got to join five of those. And then what you do is each day of the work week, you just post on one of them. And then here's the tips on being successful on Twitch. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what are you talking about? Like, no. I mean, I can give a legitimate tip to people that are thinking about doing a podcast or YouTube or, or Twitch or any of the other services yeah. be your fucking self. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Don't, I mean, okay. if you look at people that are not good brothers, for example, yeah. and people emulate and imitate that and such, and they think that that's their key to become a success and that's a that is such a fucked up word to use too. Yeah. Success. Yes. That's, Everybody that's, gauges success differently. Yeah, it's a misnomer. It it really is. I mean, I I remember having a fight on on YouTube in my comments section one time because somebody said I wasn't a success, and I'm just like, I have a steady audience. I get to have fun. I'm mm -hmm. enjoying what I'm doing. I see that as success. Yeah. And then something came up and then I, and then there, I'm just like, listen, I don't do it for the fucking money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the big thing. And they're like, oh, well now well, you're not successful because you say you're not doing it for the money, but obviously you are like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you going to gauge success based on that? Right. No. Yeah. I just recently turned on monetization on my, um, on my channel mm -hmm. and my YouTube channel. 24 cents. Yeah. Hey. hey, so you got like a million views then because that shit pays well. <laughs> shit, their new algorithm, all off, man. All off Jesus. that mod loader video, by the way, which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, it's like 24 cents. Yeah. Um, I, if you want to gauge things like that, all right, fine. I would say that's not successful at all. If you want to gauge it in a, in a money aspect. Am I doing it in, am I gauging it in that sense? No, I'm gauging it in a sense of me enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll feel like I failed when I stop enjoying it. Bingo. Yes. That's whenever it starts getting away from you. And then. Yep. 
Yeah. It becomes a job. And and because here's the deal, people trying to be, you know, all these other uh, streamers or quote unquote YouTube personalities and like, I'm going to be the next Logan Paul or I'm going to be the next (laughs) fucking whoever. And you're like, those people are going to crash and burn because either they're going to try it and come off like a doofus and fail fucking miserably because everyone's going to see him as a cheap copycat or Mm -hmm. they're going to get super successful. And then in my mind's eye, they're going to end up not being happy whatsoever because they're not themselves. Mm -hmm. They're playing a character. They always have to be on like, quote unquote, like, oh, I got to be on my, you know, I got to be on my shtick today. Um, I got to do. I mean, there's no there's no real issue if you play a character occasionally. But like, let it be known that that's the character, you know? Oh, sure. Like, I mean, you look at um, oh, what the fuck's his name? Um, Boogie, yes. something like that. Oh, genius! Boogie yeah. is a top shelf dude, and because he's so good at doing, we yeah, what's his what's his character's name? Uh, Francis. Francis. Oh, it's genius because people that don't know that it's a bit believe it, but because he's so good at it. But then you go and you see some of the stuff he does on, because he also does like trading card game unboxing things like Magic and Pokemon, mm-hmm. and that's kind of the field mm-hmm. I'm getting into a little bit. So watching his stuff is fucking inspirational because he's just a guy. He's just a guy. He's hanging out. He has a genuine passion for this stuff, and it's it's contagious. Like he's a very he's very good at what he does. Very. Good. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. But the thing is, he doesn't put on the character every fucking video correct yeah Mm -hmm. i mean and if it it is a video for that character it's marked as such you know i'm not going to watch one of his regular videos and expect him to do one of the francis freakouts yeah Yeah. like why yeah absolutely and and like another good uh kind of general huge youtuber that does super well because they're kind of always i almost consider it like a colbert report type thing is uh mm-hmm. H three H three productions. Yeah. Like uh I think his name's Ethan Klein. Um him and his mm-hmm. wife Hila. They they have that kind of like sassy, sarcastic, like I, I can't even really explain almost like a Tim and Eric sense of humor about their mm-hmm. stuff. But yeah. the thing is that's genuinely what their sense of humor is. Like they're not trying to really they amp it up a little bit for the video, but you could tell whenever they're just talking with each other that's kind of how they are in real life like they notice the hilarity Mm. in every situation and whenever they talk about these different topics or like really cringy videos like he's a comedian like he's genuinely an improv comic that is just super good at calling shit out and like just making you laugh because you feel the same way he does about this stuff but he has ways to emote it like his his cough, like he does this thing where if something's uncomfortable, he goes into like a coughing fit, but like kind of he's like mm-hmm. bleh, bleh, like gagging and like just really weird hilarity stuff. Oh yeah, that was a great video. So Todd just posted one about how YouTube's rules don't apply to everybody, and they talked about the Las Vegas yeah. shooting, the massacre that happened, and um, some of the other smaller I say smaller YouTubers. These people still have like thirty million subscribers. Um, <laughs> You're right. you know, they, they aren't allowed to talk about it at all. And there's no ads given to those. And YouTube says, well, there's no ads and you can't earn money because you can't earn money off of a tragedy. But then mm-hmm. Jimmy Kimmel posts up his monologue, yep. which is super good, but there's 30 ads on that video. Yeah. And you're like, uh, YouTube, what the fuck's going on? Like, mm-hmm. are you yeah. guys full of shit? And the answer is yes. But you know, things like that. But he talks about real stuff. And actually, H3H3 Productions, to kind of wrap this whole bit up a little bit, is they did a, they just won a huge court case about uh, copyright mm. usage. So, because on their channel, they show other videos. And they do commentary on them. So, like, they'll show other YouTube videos and then, like, cut in splices of their reactions, sort of. It's a, kind of like a reaction video, but it's more telling a narrative. like. Like yeah. this one, for instance, it shows the Jimmy Kimmel bits of the Jimmy Kimmel monologue, but then it shows bits of what this guy was talking about as well and how they kind of match. Yet he's punished by mm-hmm. YouTube and Jimmy Kimmel's rewarded. 
So it's always to make a point, and it's always commentary. They actually went to court about this. Someone tried to sue them for like defamation and uh, Jake Paul, yeah, yeah, like defamation. And H three H three wiped the board with them. Their lawyer fucking came mm-hmm. to play, man. And it was like, okay, this is commentary. And if someone throughout the commentary thinks that you're an asshole, you're probably an asshole. Like, <laughs> just mm-hmm. came out and said it. Like, they changed enough of your stuff, or they didn't change enough of your stuff to make it seem like you're something you're not. So if they're making fun of you for being an asshole, guess what? You're probably an asshole. Um, that, that was the whole court case. And they went for months and months and months, but they won. And it was a huge win for all of us, especially for like video game footage and commentary and like reviewing. Yeah. Huge win. Because that's that's kind of shaping the way that copyright works. Is you are allowed to show footage of a thing if you're doing it for commentary reasons. Um, mm-hmm. And that affects everybody, you know. Um, so yeah, like big ups to H3H3. Because, I mean, they're hilarious. But also, I mean, they... They're doing good work. Boogie's the same way. I think Boogie had something similar happen um, a few years ago where someone was trying to, oh, Boogie's trying to make money off of my name or something like that. And Boogie's mm-hmm. like, hell no, let's go to court. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, so these, these powerhouses in YouTube are actually doing good work, um, even if YouTube's trying to, you know, spite them. Um, mm-hmm. Just weird stuff, man. But that they just need to go onto one of those Facebook groups. And be like, they do. Be like, here, go to this. Just check this one out, and I'll take a picture of my Sorry firstborn for child, and I'll send it. And it's today's <laughs> date. It's fine. Like it's all good. Yeah. I wonder if that's what uh, George yeah. Lucas is going to do for like his, his next movie. He'll be like, please go see, uh, go see this trailer, please. And he'll be like, <laughs> yeah. hey, friend, watch it. Watch it till the end. Yeah. Screenshot it. Please, uh, yeah, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just do all that. T- talk about it on Twitter. Um, yeah. Expand the brand, you know. <laughs> since since I'm, I'm in a, this whole promotional kick, yeah. the last thing I did before uh, we started recording, I went to look at podcast group. So, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eyes on the brand, as you say. Hey, I'm going to start pushing that brother around. Yeah, if you, other brother, brother, I'll tell you what. I look if, for them. If you're listening from one of those groups, fuck off. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, no, the, we we appreciate your patronage, and we hope you have a great day. And be sure to like and subscribe go. and on uh, YouTube. And uh, <laughs> um, I'll just. <laughs> Kick on a kick like that all the time, just uh, man. <laughs> like I'll just murmur it in my sleep. Just uh, like and subscribe mm. and leave a comment. There you go. There you go. That's it, man. <laughs> oh, but I think that's gonna be the episode. Yeah, yeah. It's a full course meal today. It is. It is. We trashed on Star Wars. Basically, the only good thing left in this world is Blade Runner. That's what I've taken from this entire episode. And Jason, well, Blade Runner and H three H three H three H three Boogie. Boogie and uh, Aquaman, Jason Momoa Aquaman. <laughs> those are the four. Uh, yeah, Bro Aquaman. Those are the four horsemen of the awesome apocalypse. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's our. That's the perfection that we need in our lives. That and your uh, your AOL uh, screen name. Oh shit! Yeah, screen. man. Okay, so we'll go around the room real quick. So mine, uh, I'll start it. Mine was a little X, then capital K for for kamikaze, and then the number two, and then extreme with no E, kamikaze to extreme, and then with a little X on the end. And real talk, that's where Kami Hobo came from. Was AOL instant message? Yeah. It's real. Was that was your first name influenced by like the Hardy Boys? Yes, it was. I because I get like a Hardy Boys feeling out of that it. That was okay. totally that was too totally extreme. what it was. Yeah, that was too extreme. I was part of Team Too Extreme. Absolutely. Uh, oh, man. And like my backyard the wrestling name one. was Hardy yeah, my backyard wrestling name was Kamikaze, and <laughs> that was it. That's how it came to came to fruition. There you go. Yeah, like the video I mentioned, I had three. Uh, Macro six one four just switched my letters up. Yeah, because I didn't know how to pick a cool name. 
uh, Marco Strider because I was yep. known that uh, as that in uh, the martial arts tricky forms. I just misspelled my names because that's what you were supposed to be doing in the 2000s. Yeah, misspelling names. And then uh, the last one, I, last time I remember was uh, being uh, that Odang guy. That was my <laughs> right. catchphrase. Dude, my TV catchphrase dude, for a time being. Dude, I'll tell you what. The first time you and I ever spoke, ever, you were still, <laughs> I, I think I was, you were under okay, the Marco right Strider there. name. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I think that was like my, my signature, my, my pencil name or something. That's right. Your, your Mark Twain name. <laughs> You're a uh... Mark Twain, <laughs> my John Hancock. That's right. You're... <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I know I had several. And okay, I need to hear these. Yes, that has. To um, the three I do remember because I had more, way more than three. Once they open up the floodgates of just having aim. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one I had was sick rancid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Edge Lord. Edge Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like a, like you're 12 years old and you're like, oh, I get to come yeah. up with a name. Badass. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> young grizzled vet <laughs> that's is what that is. Yeah. Sick. So there was that. Then there Sick was, um, the heel. then there was Vickery, not vengeance, uh, because Ooh. of the f- fucking, um, limit on characters. I couldn't get the T in there. And um, yeah. And yeah, so there was that. And then, um, I mean, the last one, I don't think you guys will guess because I'm original. (laughs) 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 No. um, Yeah. uh, Todd EVF was the last one. Oh, okay. That's that's what sets it off. I mean, I mean, I, I, I use that name. That was, you brought up backyard names. That was one of my many backyard names. And that was a, a thing. Absolutely. And I was a, I was a cool. large child that could really just run into people really you hard. Could, you were the Stan Henson, basically. Yeah. You just I, fucking... Yeah. I, was, I was more of the fucking rhino. Like, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, okay. Like, people be just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, motion. And I'm just like, get in position. Yeah. And they go, oh, yeah, by the way, Lord. you want to look over... And boom! Yeah, just, just hit him. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yep. The butcher, <laughs> so good. <laughs> we we beat our meat. <laughs> That's such a good stick. Whenever I saw that, I was like, "Oh my god, they need to actually do that for real." Yeah, like they, they need to go you. out as the butchers, <laughs> and that's yeah, the coolest fucking gimmick. Um, <laughs> oh, so great! Oh, but I, I'm glad right. that our aim names have actually like grown up with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like little did sure. I know there would be a comedahobo.com. Like what the fuck does that mean? You know, like unbelievable, oh, right? Man. And like Todd has a full a, a full audience that knows him as Todd EBF. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a thing. I mean, when I worked in um television production, that's the stage name I went with too, so. Nice. Yeah. There you go. That's wild stuff, man. Oh, but that is our time, I think. Moriarty took her leave a little early. Had to take care of some business. Mm-hmm. But it's always mm-hmm. awesome to have her on the show. And uh, we'll, we'll get the AIM names next next time. Yeah, yeah. that we'll, yeah. we'll bring it up. So, so yeah, we're also going to keep workshopping what our big, big idea is for our dedicated show. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still on that. Yeah. I saw the devil kick. Still on it. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> it is on Hulu. So mm-hmm. that is a thing. Oh yeah. Um, okay. I have it on my my watch list on Hulu just in case. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I was spitballing ideas with uh, with Maury, and I was just like, if you really want us to suffer, I mean, you could always make us watch Two Hundred Five Live. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh Enzo. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, thank God that's whole debacle's just about done. Yeah. Oof. But now there's talks of Neville leaving. Oh yeah! Oh, I can't wait. But yeah, that, that's he the whole other thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that next week because I there I still haven't seen Hell in a Cell, but oh, Hell hmm. in a Cell was good. Yeah, it's arguably my favorite pay per view of the year. Wow! Wow! Okay, hmm. I gotta scope so. it out then. But yeah, that is our time. I mean, that's our time. Yep. Yeah, episode number forty, a good one. 
Yeah. Good. One for Full the, course meal. Yeah. W- w- one for the record books. We we learned a little about some movies. We learned a little about ourselves. Uh, Blade Runner is the friends we made along the way. That's mm. that's the moral of that story. And uh, yeah, that's our time. It's been brothering around. I'm Wes Gardner, Comedy to Hobo, and for Marco Flores, Nerd in the Bay, and for Todd EVF, we bid you all a very fine adieu. My stars and stripes. <laughs> What's the pearls? What's the I do declare? <laughs>